All right, hey everybody. So, my name is Laura. I'm new to this whole vlogging thing. I figured I'd give it a try. What this, what I want this page to be about is the military, in particular the army, and everything from maps to, once I get to my unit, like everyday life, any advice I can give you. That's what I want this page to be about. So, this video in particular is going to be about my MEPS experience. I'm going to preface this whole video by saying that nobody's MEPS experience is going to be identical to another's. Um, I say this based off if your prior service is going to be different, if you have medical history that's different than someone's, someone else's, that's going to be different. Like. The order in which I'm going to say these things might not happen in the order you will do it in, but for the most part, it's going to follow the same line, and at the end of the day, you're going to have to do all the same stuff. So, I'm going to do a video, hopefully to help people who are maybe looking to join, kind of curious as to what processing looks like, uh, and things like that. So if I help one person, just one, it was worth it. So, I have my handy dandy list that I'm going to read off of. Sorry I'm in the car. I just got back and it's all fresh in my mind so I'm just going to get it out there. So to start off, oh I guess first I guess I should say what MEPS is. So MEPS stands for Military Entrance Processing Station and everybody who is trying to serve in the armed forces has served, will serve, will go through a MEPS station. Uh, and basically what that is, is it's your first step to joining, and that is where you will take your ASVAB, equivalent to an ACT or an SAT, uh, where you will take a medical test to make sure you're qualified, and where you will pick the job you want to serve in, and where you'll, like, sign your contract and everything. So, now to go on, my experience was a two-day experience. I went Monday and Tuesday. So Monday, I showed up at my recruiter's office at 9 a.m. And then at 9.30, a shuttle came and picked me and another recruit up, like another recruit from my recruiter's office. And then from there, we drove across town to the south location, picked up one, another recruit. Then we drove to Sedalia, which is a little ways away from where we were going. But So we drove two hours there, picked up two more recruits, and then we drove to Kansas City, which was another like hour and a half. It was a really long trip that didn't need to be that long, but that's besides the point. So we finally got to Kansas City around like 2.30, I'd say 2, 2.30. And when you first get there, you're going to go to security, and it's kind of like the airport security. You'll put your bag in. Uh, make sure you don't have any like firearms, knives, explosives, if you're into that stuff. Um, anything that can harm another person, don't bring it at all. Because it can get you like banned from maps for like up to 120 days, which would really suck if you're trying to like leave soon. So after you go through security, you get checked out um, through them, you'll go check in at the front desk that's where you're gonna initially do your fingerprint so everything you do in MEPS from check-in on will you'll sign everything with your fingerprint it's just faster and more efficient so after that you'll get a sticker it says your name your branch that you're trying to go into and what you're there for uh, so mine the first night said testing so after you check in, they send you to a baggage room. It's basically just a bunch of cubbies, like in preschool, that you shove your, like, little bags in. And from there, I went to testing. So I'm prior service, so I already have an ASVAB in the system. So I didn't have to take it again, thankfully. I only had to take the TAPAs, which the TAPAs is like a personality assessment. It's uh, 120 questions. And it takes, I mean, it gives you, I think, like 45 minutes, maybe even an hour. 
it took me probably like 30 minutes. Um, it's basically A and B questions, and it's almost you got to pick the lesser of two evils, in my opinion. Both the answers suck. Um, you just have to pick the one that's the best. <laughs> that's the best way I can explain it. It's kind of like, would you rather kill your dog or your mother? Like, I'm sorry, that was actually really that was fucked up but that's what the questions were like like you just have to be like well fuck i guess i'll kill my dog <laughs> anyway sidetrack that was kind of creepy so testing you take your testing once you're done you go back up to the front and i mean if that's all you have to do you'll check out so i checked out you give it you like rip your name badge off give it to him and you wait for a shuttle to take you to the hotel. So we got to the, we shuttled to the hotel. It was literally like tops five minutes away from the MEP station. And it was really nice. It was an embassy suite, so I can't complain. And the way it worked is there was like, you know the banquet rooms in hotels? It's like they permanently made one a check-in for like the armed service rooms. Cause they basically like have these rooms permanently for the Air Force, like, or Air Force the armed services that they use for maps so they have they like control it themselves you don't go to the front desk so there you check in you get your room key you sign like papers saying you won't fuck up um and then you can go up to your room and then they start serving at my location they started serving dinner at five and they serve it all the way to 9 45 um because people are coming in all throughout the night um from maps so you eat, it, eat dinner, I eat right at five because I was starving. And then from there, you can go hang out in your room. They have like a lounge there for you that they have PlayStations, Xbox, movies, games, chess, whatever you want. I specific, I worked on uh, homework, but you can do that all the way up to 8.30 and then you have to be back in the applicant lounge where you checked in to hear a briefing. And it's basically just telling you when wake up is breakfast, all that you're gonna do tomorrow. So after the meeting, most of us went to bed just cause we had an early morning. Uh, and when I mean early morning, we will, uh, sorry, excuse me. We woke up at 4.30, so we had a hotel call at 4.30. You get a second one at 4.40. You have to be downstairs with all your stuff at five. You eat from five to 5.30. And then after you eat, you go to that lounge again, give them your key, fill out a survey, and then you wait for the shuttle that's gonna be there at 5.50. Then you're there at MEPS again at six. So it's a fairly early morning, but I mean, you're moving so much, you don't even realize it. So then get to MEPS, you gotta wait outside. For me, it was freeze. it was, okay, I wouldn't say freezing. It was pretty cold though, and you wait till everybody goes through security. You go check in, get your badge and everything, put your luggage in the baggage room, and then me, I went straight to medical, and before we even started the briefings, they tried to get us in like some type of testing, so we kind of got our day started early. So me in particular, I started off by going to hearing. I took my hearing test, and then I went and did my blood pressure test before the briefing. So then I did those two, went to the briefing. So we had a briefing from like, like a regular army guy, basically saying what to do, what not to do in MEPS. Like no cell phones in medical, no smartphone, or no smartwatches in medical. Don't sexually harass people, like basic. Don't do dumb shit. Like PowerPoint, that took about 25 to 30 minutes and then you get a lovely medical person to come in and give you like an hour 15 uh, minute brief and there they basically f have you fill out all these epi or all these forms about like heart problems surgeries tattoos stuff like that uh, and then once you're done with that, you all will go back to like the medical area and actually start doing your tests again. So after the medic after the briefing, I went and did blood, which it took like 0.2 seconds. It was super fast. They only take one vial. And then I went to 
a preliminary like doctor's visit uh, and it was basically like a neck up inspection or inspection like examination and they there they reviewed my forms like clarifying that everything I said like I could ex I explained it to them anything you answer yes to you have to explain it of why you said yes so I did that and then they check like your eyes ears lymph nodes mouth that's all they do in that one and then from there I went and took my piss test um, how that goes I can't speak for guys but for girls you basically there's you, it's a stall but you leave your window sorry I'm not even thinking of the same stuff but you leave your stall door open and there's like a woman standing in front of you I think they can do up to six in a room but there was it was only me and so you have to pull your pants down below your knees you sit down you pee in a cup and then you put it on the floor do your business like pull your pants up if you gotta go pee some more you go pee some more and then you take the cup and there's like you know how doctor's office is they have like that sliding window that's like what it is in the bathroom that goes to the testing center so they slide it open you put your specimen on the counter they pour it into another bottle then they put like a testing strip in it and they test you if you're pregnant drugs and HIV I believe and then if there's any like leftovers that's, that sounds weird if there's any leftover pee you'll just take your cup back pour it in the toilet flush it throw it away wash your hands so you're then you're done with your analysis and then from your analysis I went to vision it's like the basic, it's kind of like the, at the DMV, you got to stick your head on the thing and you can start seeing. It's that, and it's like read line six with your right eye, with your left eye, stuff like that. And then you've got to take a colorblind test. Um, I, it's the dot test, the Ishihara test. I failed it the first, I failed it, not the first time, just in general. Like, they don't let you take it again. I failed miserably, like, I got the first one. And so if you fail it, if you pass it, I think that's all you have to take. But if you fail it, you've got to do like a red green colorblind test, which is basically just a page, like a booklet and you flip the page, the pages and there's like squares and you have to say whether it's red or green. It's super easy. I passed that. And then you also have to take this thing called a pip test, which you sit like eight feet away from this box that's got like three sm like small lights. Or, I'm sorry, two small lights. And there's three colors that are used throughout the whole sequence. It's red, green, and white. Um, and you basically have to say, like, it'll show the two lights. And if you have to say in order what it is from, like, top to bottom. So, if they flick it on, you have to be, like, red, white, or green, red, or white, red. So, that's how you do that. I, I passed that. I literally was guessing. Like, I was like, there's no way this is right. And he was like, oh, you passed all of them. So, that was good. And I know, that's for the army. You only have to do, like, your regular eye, can you read this line test, and colorblind. But for the Air Force, you've got to take, like, I don't know how many it is. I think three. I may be exaggerating, but I know you have to take depth perception. There's a ton more tests you got to take for the Air Force. Um, but other than that... After vision, I went to the female doctor, and that's when the fun starts. That's where they do the good old strip down naked. I mean, like, fucking naked. It's awkward. Um, and they, I mean, they just ask you about, like, piercings, scars, tattoos, if you ever had, like, I guess if you have any, have any like, issues with your body in particular, I guess. Um, they'll check if you're flat-footed. They'll check the bottom of your feet, like, literally, like, having you lift them up and they'll inspect. I don't know what they're looking for. And then they'll make you get on, this is for females, they'll make you get on the, like, bench thing. And they'll put your feet in the stirrups. 
Uh, they'll check your spine. They'll do like a quick, I'm talking like quick check, like, whoop, yep, you're a girl, good to go. Uh, and they'll do like a breast examination. And that's it for like the actual exam. But then you've got to go over to another room and they finally let you put some clothes on. You get to put your like bra and underwear on. And this is what most people call the underwear Olympics. And you'll basically stand in a room in your undergarments doing all these ridiculous exercises. Like if you're squat, like they'll make you like drop both knees to the ground like not standing obviously because that would hurt but like if you like squatting with your knees together they would make you drop to your knees they make you do like this um they make you let's see duck walk fast walk if say you're on your knees you like have to like tuck your toes towards you and like stand up in like a fluid motion without like using your hands or like stepping forward to catch yourself oh and they'll take your height and weight and then that's it for like the underwear olympics it's like a neuro examination i guess to make sure like everything's working well, how it should and then from there i was finished i simply like they input your information at the very end just make sure it's in the system and then I went to the front desk. Actually, first I went to my liaison. Gave him all the papers they gave me. He was like, all right, you're good. And then I went to the front check, front desk and checked out and waited for my shuttle. I ate lunch in between then, too. Um, but my situation is a little different. Some people will keep going with the process. And they'll sit down with their liaison and pick a job and everything. But I'm prior service. And I have to get a waiver uh, that takes about a week to get down to come back down so I will be up there again next week actually picking my job and swearing in so it's a, like I said it's a little different for everybody else like every individual person um but for the most part that's how MEPS goes um I'll probably do a tag on video just like explaining like actually picking a job and stuff like that next week when I actually go through it again Excuse me. But, I mean, that's basically MEPS in a nutshell. Uh, I tried to do it as fast as I could, but at the same time, I want to make sure I'm giving, like, accurate information that's going to help people and, like, explain what the actual process is. So, like I said, if this helps one person, like, it was worth it. But, it has been a very long two days. I'm starving. I just got back into town. So I'm going to go get some Chipotle and stop sitting in this car talking to my dashboard while people are staring at me. So, like I said, I'll be back with a second video. Leave some comments, questions below. I'll be happy to answer them. And peace out.